Hey everyone, it's your boy Zach, and bruh, SJW is always scheming, they're scheming. Uh, so <laughs> the latest one is to finally, and they've been working on this for a while, completely decouple the comic book industry from profit to make it essentially non-profit. And um, uh, I find this uh, egregious, <laughs> so much so that I'm up at seven something in the morning making a video about it. Uh, so anyway, this is Iron Spike. As always, don't contact these people. Um, but Iron Spike is, uh, weirdly enough, uh, probably the most equivalent to my company, uh, Splato Comics, in that, uh, you know, there's been several people who have been very, very successful in crowdfunding, but they tend to smartly <coughs> stick to one or two uh, franchises. And even when they go from one to two, there's usually one franchise that people prefer a lot more. Sometimes that's the first one they do, sometimes it's the second one. Uh, but then they seem to, again, smartly stay to uh, basically two franchises. And even there with uh, Tim Lim and Doug Ernst, uh, it's, it, it looks like it's really like one franchise. It's one universe that they're creating. At first I was like, I thought it was three different series, but it's like, oh, that's the same characters in a different book, just with a different name, <laughs> and some new characters. So that's uh, really interesting. But I have a, a graph of, I don't know, it's like five or six uh, vaguely similar companies to mine, and I track their, uh, I track their you know, progress. And especially lately, when you get to bundles and extras and add-ons and first day secret perks, wow, I mean, that latest Brian Polito, uh, I, I have to go double check if I have the final numbers, but it was actually less backers, but it was much more money because uh, everyone, uh, they, they love bundles. They love bundles, absolutely. <coughs> Iron Spike is the most like my company in that uh, when you track her success, um, it's, it's just all over the map. I mean, massive swings from project to project. I think her most uh, successful one was a animated adaptation of uh, a graphic novel uh, called Lack of Daisy. Uh, but then I looked at a, like the one after that and that one was like really small. Um, so she puts out this, and this is, a, this is another SJW uh, trope, where they talk to grown-ups like they're children. They're like, you can do it. Don't let anyone stop you. I'm like, yeah, sure, that's fine. But uh, then it, it always has to end up with, like, attacking capitalism. <laughs> Comics is for uh, everyone. All cops are bastards. <laughs> like, you, 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 you overshot the runway. If you want to say that comics is the entertainment medium with the lowest, essentially no barrier to entry. Uh, Jawbreaker's book one was drawn after work while I was waiting for traffic to die down at my desk uh, with copier paper from the copier and a work pen. Like, I, it's, it's literally ballpoint pen inking. Now, it wasn't that great, but it started an empire, <laughs> essentially. Uh, $1 million in sales in Jawbreakers, and it was started at my little cubicle, uh, at my cybersecurity job, drawing with office supplies while I was waiting for horrendous uh, traffic to die down. Um, and uh, so they'll start off with kind of some, you know, you can do it, to follow your dreams, but then this one takes a hard left turn. <laughs> into people saying literally but I'm untalented it's like don't let that stop you it's like oh god now there's a lot of people who are untalented who don't know it but if you're untalented and you know it stay the fuck out of comics like what are you doing because there's a real problem here in that identity is getting people to the head of the line while claiming to be marginalized so you're people you have people who have no experience even kind of brag about it. Remember Gabby Rivera's like, yeah, I didn't really read comics. I mean, one time at my uncle's, I read an X-Men, I think it was called. Like, don't even try, because if you have a certain identity, you're gonna get rocketed to the top. And uh, now here's the other thing. There's never in the history of human endeavor been an invitation for non-talented people, knowingly non-talented. And I mean, this 
three tweet progression or digression or um, it's up early you understand devolving wow so we go for you can do it if you want to do comics sure even if you're untalented and don't let that pesky capitalism tell you you can't well uh capitalism is great for separating empty uh compliments from someone actually liking your work uh that so much so that uh that was the, one of the main vectors of attack of uh you know, twitter psychos uh against uh crowdfunding specifically comic skate on indiegogo is they made up these elaborate super mentally ill uh that uh nobody was buying these comics and it was actually all the cgers just buying each other's comics well None of us were millionaires before this. Maybe, maybe Ethan. No. If you are knowingly untalented, do not even attempt. Now, if you want to sit there in your kitchen or on your, your uh, tablet and draw a comic just to entertain yourself, that's fine. If you want to essentially doodle in some boxes on some pages, that's fine. But please, for the love of Christ, if you value the comic book industry, do not enter it knowing that you are untalented and then trying to completely decouple profit from an industry. This is uh, a way for uh, people with either no talent, little talent, or wildly inconsistent sales, like Iron Spike has, like I have, to say, hey, whatever. Success is doing anything. <laughs> no, that's not success. Success is not doing anything. Success is doing something that is successful. And yes, capitalism is a great way to decide what is successful. Because anyone can say, oh my gosh. I mean, does, it, does anyone know who Chester Brown is? Yeah, I know he dated a much music VJ. He was a massive hit in indie comics, literally drawing him pictures of himself, losing his hair and picking his nose. But he was successful. And there was some actual art to the stories. It was, it was back when the autobiographical comic was very popular. If you draw something that has basically any kind of worth, it will find an audience. This idea of the, uh, the artist who is unsung in his day and is found out after he's dead, that's really rare. And in comics, it basically doesn't exist. There's no like hidden... Uh, uh, cartoonist, comic book writer, comic book artist that like lives and draws comics for 30 years and then 20 years after he dies, people say, oh my gosh, this is brilliant. No, no. Everyone who's actually successful was successful really, really quickly. I mean, within like the first five years, they went from doing fill-ins to like, you know, oh, holy shit, this person is major force. I mean, uh, Frank Miller is a great example. Rob Liefeld, yes, he's, he's very successful. Todd McFarlane, this idea that uh, you're amazing, but people aren't recognizing it. No, if people aren't recognizing it, it's because you're not amazing. And even worse, SJWs are now making comics in some sort of homeless shelter for knowingly untalented people. Uh, and that's not good for anyone. What, like I said, Iron Spike is just trying to lower the bar to make herself more successful. Invite a bunch of people who, and the other thing, people send me these screenshots of, of Twitter threads. SJWs really need to stop saying, oh my gosh, take that, you incels. It's doing better forever. And then say, half of my take home pay goes to health insurance. Or I've completely given up on ever paying any of my bills from comics. You've been in this industry for five to 10 years and you can barely pay basic bills off of comics. That's not a problem with capitalism. That's a problem with you. It's not that you're unknown. Uh, Joe Glass a couple months ago was doing this thing about, you know, uh, uh, editors not knowing about him. Editors know about him. They're actively trying to avoid him. It's a small industry. Now that's usually used as a threat that, you know, a whisper network is gonna take you out, but it's a small industry in that you can basically be apprised of, even if you don't know the name, oh, like I've seen that person. I used to, back in the day, I would flip through every comic that came out on the stands with just a, an idea that I just kind of wanted to know the industry. And so I was never like surprised by someone, you know what I mean? 
Uh, there was never like, oh, it's like, oh, I saw that person on a Comico backup story last summer. So, you know, uh, like Aaron Weisenfeld, you would see him in, it wasn't Comico, it was, I'm blank, Continuity Comics. And then you would see him on uh, some DC stuff, and then he's, he goes to Marvel, and then, like, I, you would see the entire progression. And again, you're going from backup stories to this person is good or this person needs to seek life elsewhere within really like two to five years. So absolutely ignore anyone who tells you that capitalism is not a determiner of success. It absolutely is, at least in the realm of paying your bills. Yeah, there's gonna be a massive difference between people who really go for kind of safe normy fare and avant-garde artists. But even an avant-garde artist, bruh, you need like a thousand repeat customers to work full-time in the arts. That's it. And that's not something that came up in the last few years from Twitter or crowdfunding. Like that's been known for like more than a decade. I've been reading, you know, blog posts about it where they've proven it. Musicians, you get musicians, you get a hundred or you get a thousand fans who will consistently show up you can make a living and then you're, you make a better living depending on, you know, above 1,000. Uh, so uh, the idea of inviting knowingly untalented people into the comic book industry, fuck no, get the fuck out. Don't even think about it there. Just, just in your mind, uh, just pretend uh, to be massively unsuccessful and spare us gumming up the works because some of y'all who accept this invitation are gonna have the right identity and you are gonna get rocketed to the top. And then everyone's gonna pay the price. Uh, even you, because you're gonna waste five to 10 years, you know, uh, pretending you have talent when you're essentially a UNICEF kid in the industry. So if you know you're untalented, stay the fuck out. Don't invite people in. And don't listen to this iron spike. Capitalism is a great way to tell if you're successful and you're viable because you don't need a lot of people to make a living. You need a thousand repeat customers. In a freaking country of a third of a billion, if you live in America, in a planet of almost eight billion, you need a thousand. That's 10 Smurf villages. It's, it's doable. Trust me, it's doable. So anyway, thanks for, I thought this is going to be a cat. I get fired up. I, I hate, I hate when people freaking do this stupid lie. Uh, comics matters. It's not some joke goofball, you know, uh, industry for, uh, people who are just waiting to do something else. You should be in it to win it. You should, you know, be put me in coach. I'm ready to play all day, every day. It's not a place for, oh, I saw a Marvel. I, Star Wars is fun. No, get the fuck out, get the fuck out. Especially if you know you're untalented, that's infuriating. So anyway, thanks for watching. Don't contact any of these people. If you know you're untalented, stay the fuck out of comics. And also, if you think you're talented, you might not be, but if you think you are, you give it a good five years. And if you're not making your full freaking income off of it go seek life elsewhere there's lots of interesting fields out there healthcare i'm i'm always i watch healthcare tiktoks for like an hour every night before i go to sleep it is a fascinating i was going to say important industry it's the most important industry it's literally life bringing life into the world you know uh, giving it a uh, vibrancy and health during you know the middle of its life and then you know humanely dealing with the end of life and oh my gosh there are so many advances in, in uh, uh, not only health but extending life right now I'm telling you healthcare is the hot field of all of human history but especially <laughs> the next 100 years anyway thanks for watching bye